Hi, welcome to the channel. Thanks uh, so much for stopping by. My name is Chris, and in today's video, we're hunting for European farmhouse style antiques. And we're gonna be browsing some uh, local websites here online in Poland. And if you don't speak Polish, that's okay. I'm gonna be your tour guide and uh, I'll take care of that for you. Now, if you are interested in sourcing items, whether they be antiques or any kind of product from any other market around the world where you don't speak the language, I've created a tutorial. You'll find a link to it in the description down below. And uh, it will help, help guide you through installing a number of free tools by Google that will translate websites for you and you'll get access to any of those markets. And uh, it will translate from any language to any other language. So a uh, very powerful tool. And for today, we're gonna visit three, like I said, Polish websites. Actually, one of them is Facebook Marketplace and then two uh, actual Polish websites. And we're gonna get access to some farmhouse style antiques that I have uh, saved in my favorites list. And we're gonna see what's available and kind of what the going prices are for them. So, and I'm also gonna show you a number of things that I've recently purchased through browsing online in these marketplaces. So stay tuned, uh, some really interesting stuff. But let's go ahead and get started. And uh, we're gonna start with Facebook Marketplace. And as I mentioned today, we're looking for Polish antiques or countryside antiques. Uh, and the first two that came up here are actually authentic French antiques. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here. And uh, we have an authentic Berger à Dome. Dome, I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm not a French speaker but uh, they're listing this as from the 1900s and they're listing it for 3,599 Polish Zwolti. Uh, so that's one thing to mention as you're browsing antiques in foreign markets, uh, you're going to want to familiarize yourself with the exchange rate. So for as long as I can remember, the Polish exchange rate is uh, for US viewers. It's been between 3.7 and 4 per US dollar for about as long as I can remember. So quick rule of thumb is to take the price, divide it by four, and that'll put the price for this chair at around uh, $900. So let's take a moment and kind of click through here and look at the detail. So it's definitely showing some age, but overall it looks in really good condition. I'm not sure what's going on here, uh, but it looks like it could use a little TLC, but overall it's in really great condition for a chair that's uh, more than a century and a quarter old. Okay, and here are some wicker chairs or woven chairs. And this is this listing is for a pair of chairs from in the style of Ludwig the 16th of France. So it's uh, in the style of. And it says that it is in the 19th century. So these chairs would have been manufactured in the 1800s. So I'm not a specialist, so I'm taking this person at their word. But looking at this, they look pretty authentic. Um, really beautiful chairs. So if you're into the farmhouse style, maybe the English countryside style house or uh, French country, this would be a great selection. So uh, they are asking 1300 Polish Zwolti. So that's about, uh, three, off the top of my head, that's about $325 uh, for the pair, which I think is a pretty good deal because I looked on eBay and those probably have a value of about $1,000 for the pair in the US, so, okay. Okay, so here's another item that I purchased from an online listing. And the moment I saw it, it was calling out to me. Um, it was actually a listing that was from a place not far from where I live. And uh, it is a large, uh, retail dispenser. So we'll get a hand in here so that you can kind of gauge the actual scope of it. it. It's surprising how big it is. And it would have been used for dispensing dry goods like coffee beans or other things, even maybe candy. And uh, it has a, a little lever at the bottom that you press out and it would dispense one portion of the product that was inside. And it's made of brass or bronze, I'm not sure which. Um, I suspect brass, but it really does have a bronze look to it. So uh, maybe it, it could be either. And uh, I did pay up for this. I paid about $350, but it is a showstopper piece. It's gonna be hard for me to sell, but it is going into the container and it'll be arriving with the rest of the antiques when and if I'm ever able to get my container shipped. But uh, yeah, this was really awesome. Could not resist it, paid up for it. But uh, this is the kind of thing that would be at home in a farmhouse setting. It would be at home in an industrial setting. 
it would be at home in a rustic setting. So uh, it, it really makes an impression. And uh, we had it sitting in the kitchen for a while and everybody that came in was just enamored with it. And they, they would come up and spend time just checking it out. And uh, this was actually manufactured by a Polish company and uh, it was made in the early 1900. Now brown furniture is out, but there is, there are, there's copious quantities of handmade pine furniture in Poland. And it looks like someone accidentally spilt a bucket of chalk paint on this one. But uh, yeah, they're, they're asking quite a bit at about $400, but every bit of that price is rooted in the fact that somebody's taken the time to kind of refinish this. So uh, you can pick up pieces like this for $100 to $125 all day long here in Poland. So, uh, but this has a really nice look to it. Somebody took the time to uh, refurbish it. And like I said, it is a pine cabinet and it looks really nice. So uh, if you're looking for something refinished like this, uh, this person is asking $400. If you're looking for something that you can uh, rehab yourself, uh, you're looking about $125 for something like that in the local marketplace. Another thing that Poland has is a lot of these uh, wardrobes, these large wardrobes that were hand painted when someone got married. And most of them are from the late 1800s, sometimes the early 1800s. Here's one, this particular one sold and the asking price uh, was about $350 for this. So this is a large, imposing wardrobe and uh, it's hand painted and authentic and really nice. Here's another one. This one is, I think it has a date painted on it, 1836. And it's pretty special. It looks really nice. The asking price for this was 2,400 Zwalti, so we're looking at about $600. Um, the shelves are actually missing from this. They've been removed. You can see the, uh, the boards there that would have supported the, uh, the shelves. But other than that, it looks like it's in great condition. So early 1800s. So if you're interested in um, exporting antiques, there are thresholds in value in terms of old furniture. And usually, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's somewhere in the European Union around $50,000 per item. So if you're looking at something like this and you're wondering, can I export that? Um, in terms of furniture, there are pretty high thresholds before they uh, prohibit you from uh, taking it out. They do have a lot of laws in place to protect cultural heritage, excuse me, <clears throat> cultural heritage, but uh, I'm going to make a video dedicated to that alone. Here we have a little uh, bench. This looks like it's doll size. Pretty small, probably for setting uh, flower pots on. And this person was asking about $35 for this and it has already sold. I started collecting these items uh, when I thought about making this video a few weeks ago and in the time that uh, since the time that I saved them they've, they've actually already sold so okay so that's all for Facebook marketplace we're gonna head over to another website that I really like and it is olx.pl so if you're interested in checking this out it would be www.olx.pl and uh, so like I did before, I've uh, saved a number of items that I thought were interesting and worth looking at because um, they're just a little bit different than the kind of stuff you see back home. So uh, the first thing that I have here is a dry sink and it has a couple of porcelain enamel bowls uh, that come with it. And this is nothing special. It's a rustic little table, but the price was really good at 120 Zwalti. So we're looking at $30. Uh, for this uh, dry sink. It's got a hinged uh, surface and would be great for potted flowers or your interior decor items. So, Okay, so next we're gonna check out this workshop table. And I know that farmhouse tables are kind of a staple of uh, farmhouse style. So let's go ahead and check this out. <clears throat> uh, the asking price is 600 Zwalti. So we're looking at 150 US dollars and uh, it does have a vice on it, but it has some really nice wear from being a workshop table over the years. It could use some sanding down and 
maybe a clear coat on it. But looking at it here, I'm seeing that this is probably mortise and tenon joinery, which uh, is awesome, but uh, it doesn't look like it's done in a particularly stylish way. So uh, that leaves a little bit to be desired, but this is a nine foot heavy wooden table and they're only asking $150. So that's, that's pretty good price. Coming back to our collection here, uh, we have a interesting, cute little wagon for, for a baby. And they're looking at about $85 uh, for this wagon. It does look like it needs some restoration. But once again, as a design element for interior decor, really cool for only $75. Okay, so our next uh, item is this uh, wooden wagon. And this is not a child's toy. This was actually a utilitarian item from somebody's farm. And it is a miniature wagon, probably to transport potatoes or other things that were being uh, dug out of the field. And uh, yeah, it is straight up authentic, legit, and would look amazing as a piece of decor, whether in the garden or uh, even inside. Um, I think that's a thing recently, bringing the outdoors indoors. The asking price is not the best. It looks like they're asking about $180 uh, for this wagon. But yeah, it's really cool. Baskets are another staple of farmhouse interior when it comes to uh, antiques and design. So I've saved a number of baskets and here we have some old farm baskets. The asking price is $50 and there are two baskets in the picture. However, if I remember correctly, yeah, there are actually four baskets included in this listing. Three of the smaller and one larger and they're asking $50 for the set. This one was really cool. I got excited about this when I saw it. Um, if it wasn't so far away, I would definitely hop over and pick it up. It's a baby basket of some kind, and they're only asking $7.50, but it's a really large basket, and it's got these wooden beads at the intersection of all of the spokes, and it just has a really cool look. It's got a worn, rubbed, used look. You see some rusted hardware on here, and yeah, it's the real deal, and they're only asking $7.50 for that. So. That could be a major, oh, looks like maybe some repair at the bottom. But this could be a, uh, a major piece in an uh, interior decor table setting. Keeping on the theme of baskets, uh, demijohns are really common here. And uh, recently when I was at the Round Top Antique Show in Round Top, Texas in Warrington, I saw these everywhere and without fail they were all between 90 and $110 for just the bottles. So here you get a bottle, a basket, and the free dirty hay uh, with each one. And the asking price for each one is $12. So that's a pretty good deal. Uh, if you're flipping them for $90 at the antique shows, uh, I think that's a, something you'd wanna buy all day long. So a few different styles, and they have some actually super gigantic ones as well. And I haven't found that there's a big difference in price between the bigger ones and the smaller ones. So, so one thing that's really underrated, in, in my opinion, in terms of uh, farmhouse uh, design and decor is the use of iron. So uh, I've got a number of iron pieces here. One, in spe one specifically, it's an interesting little uh, hand wrought iron chandelier. And the price is, it's a fair price. It's 250 as well, meaning it's coming in at about $65. And actually I have something very similar that I recently bought online and I'd like to share that with you now. The amazing thing is that I only paid $50 for it, believe it or not. So I can't tell you how excited I was to purchase this, uh, to find this. And whenever I find something like this, I, I'm always worried that it's not gonna be there uh, once I make the drive to pick it up. But this is a heavy duty wrought iron, handmade, uh, looks like it's kind of a chandelier that was made for candles. And uh, it has some really ornate ironwork and ornate leaves and flowers. And uh, it has a beautiful patina. and has that kind of faded cream color. And uh, yeah, just spectacular. Super excited to get it. 
and the price was really amazing. If you believe it, I only paid $50 for this. So uh, it was definitely a home run and I'm super excited and proud to have it. And uh, yeah, I hope I find more stuff like this. Okay, so getting back to the other iron pieces, I wanted to jump away from OLX to another website called shedayemet.pl. Uh, try to say that five times fast. Uh, I had saved one particular item that was iron and really caught my attention because it's super quirky but kind of pretty in its own way. And it's a hallway rack. And uh, it's designed for keeping your umbrellas and hanging your coats on. And it's a super tall piece and it's super heavy duty, wrought iron, very ornate and decorative. And uh, let's take a few looks at this. When I first saw this listing, they listed it for the equivalent of 400 US dollars. And it looks like over time nobody's purchased it, so it has recently been lowered to about $250. And uh, yeah, it is pretty interesting. Not something you see every day. It's got a mirror in the center. It's got a big uh, finial on top and a lot of ornate hooks to hang things from and would look really cool in a hallway, so. Okay, so here we are once again at uh, olx.pl and we're continuing on our little riff of iron items. And I saved this particular listing. Um, this person is asking $125 and that's, that's a price for each one. But these are a number of gate panels. And uh, they've weathered and they're aged and they've been sitting outside for a long time and they have a really cool patina. And I just thought that uh, with a little bit of imagination, they would look pretty cool in a farmhouse setting as a, a panel on a wall. There'd be a little crossover maybe into rustic or industrial, but uh, I think they'd be right at home as well in a farmhouse setting. So uh, really cool, interesting piece. And uh, it kind of stretches the mind to think about ways in which you can repurpose items uh, that, that do have a sculptural kind of quality to them or an aesthetic to them. So here's another uh, gate element, and these are three ornamental elements from an actual old fence. One, one thing that caused me to save these and show them to you is that they're really old and they're very ornate and they're actually only asking $12 each for them. So I know that an item like this at a round top or a brim field would cost a lot more to pick up. So at $12, that's a really uh, interesting pickup. So. Uh, and there are three matching pairs. Let me see. Um, yeah, they're asking $12 for each individual piece. So here's another item in the iron category, which is a, an outside water fountain sink. And uh, actually these were mass produced and you can find these very frequently in this area, but they're not all created equal. This one has a really kind of pretty look to it. And the asking price for this is $150. It's got some authentic age to it, you can see, and uh, would look pretty amazing in a garden. Okay, so here's another item that you can frequently find in Poland and in Central Europe in general, and that is a cast iron wood-burning stove. For a country home, this could be really cool if you dare to have one in your house. Um, but it is super ornate, and uh, the asking price is not very much. It's um, 550 zwoty, which is about $125. So uh, the interesting thing is it only costs five zwoty, which is $1.25 for delivery. So he, I, he's asking $125, but that's pretty much including delivery. So if you wanted a nice little wood-burning stove for your cottage, uh, and we're going to buy a modern one for $125. I don't think you could go to Tractor Supply or uh, Rural King or uh, Home Depot and get that. Even the low quality modern ones that they make these days, I don't think you could get that. So this is really a very ornate, cute kind of thing if you were looking to have uh, alternative heating supply in your house. So. so the thing about porcelain enamel wear is it's really abundant. So. If you go to flea markets here, you can find it everywhere. The thing is to try to find those pieces that are a little bit different than the rest. So 
Uh, I've pulled out a couple and um, I'd like to show them to you. But first, I wanna show you a piece that I actually purchased online and uh, it's pretty spectacular, so check it out. Okay, so I picked this item up and believe it or not, uh, I only paid $70 for this and it is a gigantic heavy duty cast iron porcelain enamel uh, basin. And as word has it, it was used for, as a baptismal basin for infants at a local church. So uh, it does have some signs of wear where the porcelain is chipped off, but we've gone over that with a grinder and clear coated it and uh, it's smooth again. And just enough wear on to show its age, but it's, you know, it's a big white piece and it would be great as a center element for a large display. And uh, it has that farmhouse look and uh, this is something you don't see every day. Uh, like I said, I, I think, I'm trying to remember, I, I think I paid somewhere around $70 for it. So, uh, yeah, super excited to find it and um, can't wait to have that featured in my booth. So here's a porcelain enamel farmhouse uh, milk pitcher. And this came to me for $4 and it actually came with a number of free leaves. <laughs> Souvenir from Poland. So there's so many porcelain enamel things here in the, in the markets and it's possible to find kind of more unique things that you don't see every day. And so I wanted to save a few things that um, I haven't really seen much back at uh, the antique shows back home. So here's a porcelain enamel jug and it does have a handle on it. It's got some hand painting going on, has just enough wear on it, that perfect amount of wear to show its age but still really pretty and really well taken care of. So uh, this item still has its original lid and original handle intact. And it is um, <clears throat> 37 centimeters tall. I'll Google that and put that information in inches. Uh, and the asking price is about $30 for that piece. So, and that's asking price before negotiation. Here is a, a campote, which I thought was really neat because it had uh, those kind of soup handles on both sides. It's a large piece, porcelain enamel as well, white and uh, granite. And the asking price here is about $11. So if you collect porcelain enamel wear, that's a pretty neat piece. And the price at $11 is really super. This is a, a big soup bowl and not very much money, $11. This is kind of a common piece here where little uh, porcelain enamel bowls or glass bowls would have been put in these holes and then it would be bolted to the wall. And you can take a pinch of salt or uh, some of your spices. Uh, they also can be used to put cups in, to store cups after they're washed. But uh, this has some pretty significant wear to it. And the asking price is $20 for that. Okay, so that brings us to our last porcelain enamel piece. And this is a, uh, a porcelain enamel cast iron basin. And uh, this would be perfect as a planter in a garden. And it's quite large, as you can see. Um, let's see if they have the information in the description. It's uh, 94 centimeters long and 27 centimeters high. So I'll uh, put that information here. It does have some wear, some visible wear, but uh, I think it would be really cool as a, as a planter. That's what this person is using it for. And uh, the asking price on this is about a little over $40. So for those of you who like the big pieces, here we have an antique double wardrobe with a dresser. And uh, this one's really interesting. It has the mirror missing, uh, but you have to be really serious to commit to something uh, like this, this is a big major piece. And the description says that they're asking $500 for this. Let's take a look at a few different angles of it. Looks like the mirror is missing, uh, which is not a big problem. Um, I do remember when I looked at this before, let's see if I can uh, zoom in on this. You can see that the paint has some cracking to it. Uh, showing its age, which I think is kind of a really cool, desirable uh, aspect of it. And like I said, they're asking $500 for that. 
Um, that's going to take a huge portion of the container up. So uh, that would, you'd have to think about that one. Here we have a piece of handmade folk art and uh, rocking horses all through the early 1900s were mass produced and you'll find them everywhere all over the flea markets here. But this one is a little bit unique. Uh, these are the kinds that you want to look for because they're handmade. They are folk art and somebody made this for their kid or their grandkid. And uh, I think the price is pretty reasonable at $175. And uh, it definitely shows its age. Looks like uh, it's well taken care of. And yeah, like I said, this is the kind you want. You don't want the mass produced one. You want the one that somebody made from the heart. So super special. Okay, so here we have a really interesting piece. This is a, another brown furniture piece, but it's been painted. And uh, I saved it because I was interested in the fact that it was a little bit more narrow. Um, a lot of the large brown wood pieces stick out really far from the wall and they require like a major commitment to that piece. This was a little bit more narrow and it could work in a, in a wider hallway, uh, but it does have a pretty interesting uh, look to it. So uh, a little bit more country farmhouse than a lot of the big wood stuff that you see. So let's look here, what they've got a few hangers in them. I'm not sure what those are. Uh, apparently they come with it. But the asking price on this wardrobe is about $360. Another thing that's really popular right now at the moment is taking these uh, previously unwanted large uh, wood pieces and sanding the heck out of them so they have a bleach or worn look. And uh, you can find these all over OLX website. Here's one for 250 zwalti, which means that it's about $62 and yeah, it's pretty cool. Has a good look to it. $62. Here's a chair that I don't know why, but I've had it saved for quite some time. Uh, the asking price is $75. But when I look at it and I just see that kind of worn, rubbed, old look, uh, it just makes me think that it's really something special. So, uh, unfortunately this is too far away for me at the moment. I don't have a dedicated vehicle to drive around and pick up antiques. So that's something that I'm working on. And I'm also working on some storage for housing that stuff until I can get it sent over. But yeah, so this is a really interesting piece. I have never seen anything like it. And, uh, the asking price is about $75. So I think it's worth it. So my hope is to create a number of uh, these style of videos. And I wanna make several uh, videos like this one about farmhouse and I wanna branch out into shabby chic and I wanna branch out into industrial and brutalism and uh, try to focus on the different antiques that are available here in Europe, not only in Poland, but also in all of the countries of Central Europe here. And I wanna document the process of filling my first container full of antiques and uh, there are going to be a lot of challenges on the way. I want to be a vendor at a major antique show uh, in the U.S. And uh, this is not an easy process. So for people that are considering sourcing antiques for, uh, from Europe, I wanted to create a channel that shared the lessons that I'm learning along the way, the challenges that I'm facing and uh, the solutions that I come up with. And I, I've just had so much trouble in the past finding really reliable, good, consistent information on that topic. It's kind of a gap in the stuff that's on uh, YouTube. So if you're interested in this and you'd like to follow along, please subscribe. It really helps to grow the channel. If, if I get some subscribers, it's going to help to push out this content to other people and uh, check back often because uh, I'm going to dedicate myself over the next year to creating a lot of content um, to help other people who are looking to import antiques from Europe. So thank you so much for visiting with me today and I hope to see you on the next video. Once again, don't forget, there's a link in the description below if you're interested in uh, learning the tools for browsing the European websites uh, in English on your own. So see you soon.